Okay, let's talk about double roots. And here I have a little graph that indicates that this is a double root, and this in fact is. Uh, but as I state right here, this is an algebra must know. You definitely got to understand what a double root is because um, what we're dealing with, the, the topic here that we're dealing with is quadratic equations, okay? So that is the topic, quadratic equations. So some type of solutions or you can have double roots as type of solutions in quadratic equations, but quadratic equations are actually kind of a subset of polynomial equations, okay? Uh, quadratic equations are degree two polynomials. That's a fancy way of saying that the uh, highest power of the equation is uh, two, okay, like an x squared. So you got to master quadratic equations if you're gonna understand how to solve more advanced polynomial equations. So if you're studying quadratic equations and you're intending to continue on with your math education, and hopefully that's the case, believe me when I tell you, you're going to need to completely master quadratic equations to understand this stuff, okay? And part of understanding quadratic equations is understanding the type of roots of which a double root uh, is one of them, okay? So you need to understand double roots. They're not difficult. Uh, they don't come up all that frequently, um, generally speaking. A lot of students, when they you know encounter one, they might be like, hmm, oh yeah, this is a double root. You know, they're kind of like thinking, they're looking out for two unique type of roots. I'm going to get into all this here in a second, okay? But as I uh, stated, you definitely got to know this stuff in algebra, okay? So uh, the objective of this video is to really make sure you got a solid foundation in double roots. And obviously, we want to get you to always have a happy face in mathematics. So I'm going to get to this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, what I have is 100 plus different math courses. Um, I have all the big courses like Algebra, Algebra 2, Geometry, uh, Pre-Algebra, College Algebra. I'm going to be launching Pre-Calculus here. But I have many, many specialty courses for like test preparation. So if you're preparing for the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, a teacher certification exam, nurse, nursing entrance exam, you kind of get the picture. There's a lot of people out there studying math outside of like a math course. Okay, They're studying math because they need to have this math um, they need to have math skills in order to pass the exam to get into a school, like the Accuplacer, Alex, CLEP exam. Um, you know, there's just tons of very, very important exams out there that have a big impact on people's lives. So I have a, a large library of test prep courses. You can obviously go to my site and see if I have uh, that course for you. And if I don't, drop me a line. I'll uh, give you my best recommendation. I also do a lot with independent learners, like homeschoolers, to have full, complete curriculum. Uh, that, you know, people take, uh, you know, uh, obviously independently. And then obviously if you're taking algebra or algebra two or college algebra and you're just not, you know, it's going, you, the te you're, you're not clicking with the teacher um, or whatever reason, you need more help outside the classroom, well, then my program could definitely help you out. But what you need to do to help yourself out is take great notes. So um, over decades of teaching math, there's like this one trend that comes up over and over again. Uh, I actually think it's the law, one of the laws of the universe. <laughs> and that is those students who take great math notes almost always end up like this person at the end of the year. They have a nice math grade that they want to, you know, to show off to people. Hey, look at me. I got an A plus. But, you know, in order to get to here, you're not going to get there. Uh, without taking great math notes. And then, of course, the reverse is true. Those students who uh, don't take math notes or take sloppy math notes or whatnot, they don't, they end up like this person. They are like, oh my goodness, what happened to my grade? Well, you know, you know, let's just be honest about it, okay? Uh, if you're not focused and engaged, if you're just hoping to kind of slide by, there, that's not going to work, okay? Especially in algebra, there's too much information coming your way. So notes is evidence of you remaining engaged in class. So you can watch a you know, video like this or watch other videos. You know, that's all great. But if you're not taking notes on a daily basis, consistent, great notes and studying for those notes, then, you know, that information is not going to go into your brain, okay, into, you know, you're not going to retain that information. So that's part of learning math and obviously practicing. So it's a process. You got to have these habits down, okay? But 
if you need to improve in your note taking, and most people do, you still need something to study from. So I offer um, detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. So you can find like this uh, type of roots in my algebra or algebra two notes. Uh, pre-algebra, this is a little bit, um, a little bit more advanced for uh, pre-algebra students. Okay, so let's get into double roots. What are we talking about here? So again, we're talking about quadratic equations. All right, so let me show you an example of a quadratic equation. Something like this, uh, let me write that a little better. Uh, 2x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. That's, uh, this is a, a trinomial. Okay, we set it equal to 0, so we're trying to solve this quadratic equation. Something like this also would be a quadratic equation. Um, here, let me give you another example something like that. So these are various examples, but basically what we're dealing with is polynomials, and the highest power of these polynomials is 2, okay? And there's a very important theorem in algebra called the fundamental theorem of algebra, and it basically says that if you have a polynomial, okay, given a polynomial, the degree, the highest degree of that polynomial, in this case quadratic equations is degree 2, that's how many solutions you must have. The polynomial will have whatever the highest degree is. So with the quadratic uh, equation, okay, we are dealing with degree two polynomials. Okay, so degree two polynomials must have two solutions. So what type of solutions? Now we use this word roots. Okay, roots, solutions, zeros are all kind of, well, for the most part, interchangeable uh, terms and you're, they're going to come up roots, solutions, zeros. So what are we talking about? Well, when we're discussing uh, the type of roots for a polynomial, polynomials can have either uh, real number roots, okay, or complex roots, imaginary roots. And this kind of, you know, is going to branch off into more advanced topics, but you just need to understand that, okay? Sometimes we have real number roots, sometimes we have complex number roots. And if you don't know what a complex number is, don't worry uh, you will learn about this, okay? And I have plenty of videos on complex numbers and type of roots um, in other videos. You can check those out in my Algebra or Algebra 2 playlist on my channel. All right, so let's uh, kind of um, graphically see what we're talking about here. All right, so let's take a uh, parabola. Now, if you didn't know, parabola is the graph, uh, the shape, okay, or the graph of quadratic equations, quadratic functions have some sort of parabola graph. It's a U, it can go like this, uh, this way, or it can go like this, or it could be like that, it could be like this. It can be an, either an up U or a down U. And if you wanna know how to graph these guys, I have plenty of videos uh, on my channel um, talking about how to graph parabolas, okay? But we don't really need to know how to precisely graph a parabola right now. We just need to kind of understand if we have, um, a particular quadratic equation and its graph looks like this, the solutions graphically are going to be located here, okay? These are the roots, okay? These locations right here are the roots or the solutions or the zeros, okay? So like right here, this could be, let's say, positive two, and this would be like seven. So this particular quadratic equations, uh, 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 solutions will be x equals two, and x is equal to seven, okay? And these are two real number roots, two distinct, unique real number roots. This is two, and that's seven. Okay, there's two roots, and the fundamental theorem of algebra says I have to have two roots, and there's are, you know, are two roots. So let's take a look at another graphical example here. And let me just draw something, uh, let's say something like this. Okay, so here is a parabola, but it's upside down. So where are the solutions, or the roots, or the zeros? Well, right here, okay? So let's say that was negative four, and maybe this is positive one, okay? So we have x is equal to negative four, and here x is equal to one. No big deal, okay? Everyone's like, all right, that makes sense. So this type of um, graph, where the graph crosses through the x-axis, those locations, okay, are going to be, these x-intercepts are going to be um, uh, solutions uh, or zeros to polynomial equations. That's a very important concept because as you progress beyond quadratic equations, you're going to be looking for those points. But when it crosses the x-axis, that is a real number root. 
All right, so what happens if we have something like this? We have our little parabola, and here is the graph of my quadratic equation. It goes like that. So you're like, well, it's not crossing the x-axis. Yes, that's correct, okay, but it still has solutions. So what type of solutions does this uh, quadratic equation have? Now, of course, I'm not showing you the actual quadratic equation. It could look like this, this, or this. Don't worry about it. If we were to graph it, we're just looking at the associated graph, okay? So uh, this type of uh, parabola, okay, the graph of uh, this type of quadratic equ uh, equation or function has complex number or imaginary roots. It has no real number roots, no real number roots, okay? It must, uh, the graph must cross the x-axis to have a real number root, okay? So it still has to have two roots. It just has two imaginary roots. Now, again, if this is kind of unfamiliar with you, you will learn this, okay? So don't, uh, you know, panic. I'm kind of setting you up for success. Uh, and if you're learning or if you're interested in double roots, then you're right around the corner learning about imaginary roots. Now, finally, let's get to double roots. So let's take a, a parabola that does something like this, bounces, boom, off the x-axis. Well, if it bounces, okay, like a bounce, okay, it's not uh, going through the x-axis, it just touched at one location, let's say here at five, well then that is the solution, okay? But we have a solution x equals five, and remember, that would be one solution, the other solution is also going to be five, so this is a double root, okay? So we can recognize that when graphs bounce off the x-axis, or the parabola bounces off, or a polynomial equation later down the line when you when you stutter it's when you study not stutter uh, higher degree polynomials like uh, third degree polynomials x cubed and now we're looking at graphs like so anytime a polynomial is bouncing off the x-axis you're going to get a double root there okay so in this case this graph and that's by the way a real number root okay this is a real number root but we were looking for two solutions. Well, the solutions are x equals 5 and x equals 5. Again, that is a double root. So let's take a look at this problem, okay, right here. And let's kind of reverse engineer this. So I'm going to construct um, an actual, the actual problem. So here we have x plus 5 and x plus 5 equals 0. So let's go ahead and multiply these guys together. We'll use the FOIL technique. So this is going to be x times x. That's x squared and uh, x plus 5, that would be plus 5x, and then we have another 5x right there, and then we have 5 times 5 is 25, and that's equal to 0. So we have x squared plus 10x plus 25 is equal to 0. All right, so let's say you were given this problem right here to solve, all right, and hopefully, okay, you have... Uh, the skills to factor this, okay? If you don't know how to factor, you must know how to factor, okay? So you, you always want to attempt to factor a trinomial uh, when you're, you're looking to solve a quadratic equation, right? Now, if you can factor, and of course, these are the factors because we just, you know, <laughs> multiply the factors to get back to the original problem. So if you factor this, you end up with x plus 5 times x plus 5. So what do you do with the factors? x plus 5 times x plus 5 is equal to 0, okay? So we love factors because what we're saying is this thing times this thing is equal to 0, all right? This is uh, an illustration of something called the zero product property. So something times something else is equal to 0. The only way that can happen is if this thing is equal to 0 or this thing is equal to 0. So what we want to do is set each factor equal to 0, okay, and solve. So x plus 5 is equal to 0 and x plus 5 is equal to 0, right? We're going to set each of those uh, linear factors equal to 0, and when we solve, we get x is equal to negative 5, and x is equal to negative 5, okay? So what do you think that parabola would look like? If I was to graph this function right there, what do you think that would look like? Well, we would have to go over here and at negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there's negative 5 right there, that is our double root, okay? And we know it's going to be some sort of parabola bouncing 
and we look at this x squared right here, okay, and you're like, hmm, is that a positive or negative 1 in front of that x squared? Okay, well, it's definitely not a negative, so it's positive, and a basic rule uh, for parabolas is parabolas that open this way, okay, are happy parabolas, okay, and these are where the leading coefficient's positive, and sad parabolas, okay, is where the leading coefficient is negative, right? So that's just kind of a little way to think about it, but I have tons of other videos on graphing parabolas. Of course, we're kind of focused in on uh, double roots, but, you know, as, you know, everything in mathematics, these are all interrelated topics. All right, so here is our solution, negative 5, negative 5. This is going to be positive, since so it's going to be up, opening upward, so it's going to look something like this, okay? There you go. All right, so uh, when we're talking about types of roots, double roots, you got to have a whole understanding of the big picture, okay? How graphs are related, uh, what type of roots, you know, you could have in quadratic equations, how quadratic equations are part of the family of polynomial equations, the fundamental theorem of algebra, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Remember, we definitely don't want you looking like this, at the end of your algebra course, okay? And certainly nobody likes summer school or to repeat a course. There's no, uh, you know, it's not necessary, okay? Everyone could be like this, okay? But you got to work for it. You got to work for it. This is this, and that doesn't mean watching an occasional, you know, YouTube video here and doing a little bit here. You know, like if you looked at your work and effort, if you're cycling up and down, like sometimes you're inter interested in math, you're going to work hard, and then other times you get distracted, and then you're like, uh, and then, then you're like, I'm going to get back to learning math, and then you kind of fall off the wagon, you kind of do that. This is, you know, the at, this is going to be, you know, you might pass with a C, right? And that's, you know, that's far be beneath your potential. Everybody watching this video can ace algebra and get an A plus uh, in the course. Some of you are going to have to work a little bit harder than others. I understand that, but... Uh, it, you know, even if you have a natural aptitude for mathematics, you just can't sit and watch it without putting effort in. And the worst thing I've heard over the years, too, is people like, oh, I'm super good in math. I just like, I don't even have to study. I take tests and I get A's. I hear that all the time, or I have like this photographic memory. Believe me when I tell you, there's just too much information coming your way in algebra. There's a lot of information to know. And that's just going to be the beginning. If you're, you know, you're in an algebra course, you know, you get the amount of information you're going to start learning beyond algebra. You just get it grows exponentially. Algebra two, you know, geometry, pre-calculus, uh, whatever the case. So again, you know, I like to leave you with my best advice when it comes to learning mathematics, not just the topic. Okay, because I want you to be successful. All right, so, uh, you know, if this video was helpful in some way, you know, you enjoyed it, please consider smashing that like button. That would help me out. Um, also, if you're new to my YouTube channel, again, please consider subscribing. I have hundreds of videos on my channel uh, organized from basic to advanced um, on my uh, playlist. But if you want my best math help, uh, follow those links in the description of this video. Okay, so uh, definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics um, adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.